in a right convoluted way, really, because I am. Um, my first career was in uh, catering and cooking as soon as I left school. I went to school for close to two years. And then I went to work after a while to do several jobs down in Devon. And whilst I was down there, I saw people leaving. And um, I was working on a boat in the middle of the estuary in Salkham, and so I thought that's what I want to do. <laughs> I didn't know anything about textile design courses, but I did a bit of research, and um, so I managed to get back to college and did three years of textile design at Derby, which is sort of hometown. I do still enjoy the actual making process. This is um, silk scarves, which is what I mainly do, and I do do other cushions or curtains and cloth to order, but um, scars are the main items. And um, I do my own dyeing. All these yarns up here are dyed. They're not natural dyes, they're chemical dyes. Um, Chemtex acid dyes, which silk just loves. It's a great fibre for dyeing, and you can get some very strong colours as well as the custom ones. But at the end of the day, silk scarves and <coughs> the sort of bread and butter line um, and the ones that I enjoy making the most really because there's so much scope for the design side of it. And do you do all the dyeing in the workshop? Yes, yes, I've got a, an old tea boiler. <laughs> um, and then I do um, usually do several scarves at a time, this is a walk now for three. Before I do the dyeing, I, I de drum the silk, which is putting it in a bath of soda crystals and soap flakes. And that helps to soften it right down, which means the finished scarves are very drapey and soft, which I know when people touch them, they're always sort of happily surprised by, by that. Um, and I think, I like to think that the drapiness of the scarves is something that my work is known for, really. This loom is a Swedish eight shaft glimakra, um, which I got from Sweden 25 years ago. And it is very, very simple, but it's enough for my needs because I just like to do, as I say, very, very simple patterning with colour. Colour is my main. Um, motivation, I suppose, and um, and very simple patterns, and using different yarns, different textured yarns. Sometimes he come in and they say, "Oh, I bet you can play the organ." <laughs> It looks quite exhausting, is it? It is quite, yes. I mean, if I, I very rarely weave completely the whole day. I do try and sort of have a break, either do some dyeing, make a walk, um, just to break it up, because this is tiring, and especially as there's no back left, um, it, 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 it's not not to be able to go down to their bad back. Have you got a bad back? <laughs> Indeed. I have to, have to watch that. So this is um, the process of winding the pearl, which um, actually goes into the shuttle. Take that end off. Bit of lick. Onto the winder. You just catch it in there. Wind it round. And then it spins off. This family came in last summer and they were fascinated with this and there was some whispering going on. And um, I think it's a what not, this, this name that I said sometimes it is called. I, I said, um, they didn't talk to me properly about it when they were watching me weaving and watching me do this. And um, it was really sweet. About an hour later, they all came back with a, a child's book. And um, I said, this is the present. <laughs> I said, what's that then? And I said, and it's, 
it's a book, I can't remember who it's written by, but it's called A Whatnot, or, or Dad's, Dad Finds a Whatnot, or something, and it's the whole story about this family and Dad finding one of these in the attic, and not knowing what it was, and then taking it to an antique shop, and the antique man saying, it's a whatnot. This is a paper pen that I've just wound, so it goes into the hole inside of the shuttle, so into there, and then slots onto the metal rod in the middle, and then just clips in down there, and then it's ready to go. With woven material, there should be no knots at all, so you just overlap the ends of the thread by about an inch, and that will hold it because. You'd have to deliberately sort of unpick it um, for it to come apart. And those things have to be washed once they come up the room. So again, there's a slight shrinkage which tightens up that drawing so there's never really any problem. When I was a child I can remember having um, my brother and I having wounds. <laughs> Silkworms, and uh, I think they died before they got to the cocoon stage. But most of it is um, produced in China, uh, where they have to grow thousands and thousands of mulberry trees because they still feed on mulberry leaves, and that gives the quality. Silkworms that are fed on mulberry leaves produce the best, the best quality silk. And there are other silk moths um, found in India and other areas that don't feed on mulberry and that the quality of that silk isn't as good. So here we have some examples of the kind of work I do. Um, this is a very similar scarf to the one that's actually on the loom, just a different, different brown. You can see the actual finished item. And when it comes off the loom, it, it will be very stiff and, and have no shine to it, so I have to wash them. Um, and I put a little bit of vinegar in the last but one rinse to bring the shine up and then they get pressed with a hot steam iron so this silk's much stronger than shirting silk. This is a fantastic book called World Textiles and I was looking through it the other day and, and really liked this um, idea of these sort of black and bamboo coloured cloths. So this you can't actually see a finished idea but this is the warp that I've made from that idea. This is a warp enough for four scarves and that will take me uh, probably a day to get that now on the loom and weave the four scarves. They're only quite small ones. They're this size, they'll only be this size because this is a very popular size um, because they're small enough to tuck into, into a collar um, and a lot of people don't like being swamped and they can be worn sort of in the summer or spring without it necessarily being um, just for warmth, they're sort of like more like a fashion accessory. This one is quite different from, this is a sort of obviously a check, and this is a check, but with lots of colour and much more sort of a design process. This is a twill done uh, in a pointed draft, which is the way you thread it up on the loom, and then introducing some colour. Again, sort of slightly African inspired. I got this idea actually when I went, I went to Thailand a few years ago and worked with um, a project out there with one of the hill tribes and they were making turban cloths and they always had big borders at each end. So when I came back from there it sort of did influence the work I did and uh, I still do big sort of, this is not as, as deep as they would have but this is border idea. This is something else that I make that's apart from scarves, um, a cock cover, uh, which I have been making these for, for several years, obviously using cotton that's machine washable and pastel colours. Um, I like to use sort of the yellows and peppermint greens as well, so it can be an either or um, if it's bought before the baby's born. Um, so that's something that um, is quite nice to make occasionally. Weaving's just just completely in every country. It'll all be very different and different techniques. But man has woven cloth to wear, you know, since they came out of the cave. Guild, I've been a member now since about 1990, um, and it's been great for me because I've been able to show at the exhibitions, get my name around. Because when you move into an area and start building up your own business. It's difficult to, to get known, and the Guild has been a way of 
stuff. It introduced me to a wider audience and, and also meeting other, other craftspeople and, and that sort of sense of all belonging and all sort of working towards the same thing.